Welcome to Electron Online, and here's a good example of how to use our ideal gas equation, PV equals nRT. So again, uh, we realize that n is the number of moles, r is the constant, uh, the gas constant, 8.31 joules per mole per Kelvin, P is pressure, V is volume, T is temperature. So if we then take our temperature, move it down to the denominator, on the left side of the equation, we have PV over T equals nR, and realizing that n is constant and r is constant, so that pv over t is equal to a constant, which means we can say that p1 v1 over t1 equals p2 v2 over t2. Now, the problem is as such. Let's say that uh, we want to make sure that when we uh, drive our car in a, in a hot desert road, temperature is very high, the friction between the road and the tire, heating up the air in the tire up to 120 degrees Fahrenheit, we don't want the pressure at that moment to be greater than 44 psi, pounds per square inch. So the question is, when you're at home, before you're starting your trip, and the temperature is 60 degrees Fahrenheit, what should the pressure of the tires be so that when you're under these conditions, the temperature at a temperature of 120 degrees Fahrenheit, the pressure doesn't exceed 44 psi. So you want to put less pressure in the tires when you get started. So, uh, plugging that into our problem, and of course realizing that the volume in this case remains constant, which is pretty well true in a tire. A tire doesn't expand very much when the pressure increases, the temperature increases. So we can say that V1 is approximately equal to V2, which is equal to a constant. All right. So, what we want to know is we want to know the initial pressure when the temperature is 60 degrees, so we want to figure out what this is equal to. So that's what we're looking for, and so we're going to put T1 over there and V1 down here. So we say that P1 is equal to P2 V2 times T1, we move T1 over here, divided by T2 times V1 when we bring V1 down here. Now also realizing that V1 and V2 are approximately equal, that means that V2 and V1 cancel each other out. And so now we're just left with plugging the numbers here. Now we have to be cautious for a few things. First of all, the temperature was expressed in Fahrenheit degrees and we probably have to uh, convert that to Kelvin. And secondly, we're talking about gauge pressure here and we do not want to put gauge pressure into this equation. We want to put in total pressure. And of course, total pressure is equal to gauge pressure plus atmospheric pressure, which means that P total is equal to P gauge plus P atmosphere which means that the gauge pressure was 44 psi and we have to add to that 14.7 psi for the atmospheric pressure so this is the total pressure as 58.7 psi again typically we want to have the pressure in terms of newtons per square meter or pascals but uh, since we're calculating pressure and we have pressure on the right side here, we're just going to get the answer in the same units that we are using right here. So 58.7 is the total pressure in the tire when it's 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Secondly, we have to convert the temperature to Kelvin. All right, so first of all, uh, 120 degrees Fahrenheit is how much in degrees centigrade? Question mark. And so the way you do that is centigrade degrees is equal to uh, Fahrenheit degrees uh, times fi uh, 5 over 9. So 5 over 9 times Fahrenheit degrees. But before you do the conversion, you have to subtract 32 from that. So that's how we convert from one to another. So in centigrade degrees, this is equal to 5 over 9 times 120 minus 32, so that's equal to 5 over 9 times 120 minus 32 is 88. And so with the calculator, we'll get that number, 88 times 5 divided by 9, and so we get 48.89 degrees, or just simply say 48.9 degrees centigrade. All right, converting 60 degrees, we do the same thing. So C is equal to 5 over 9, times F minus 32, and so that's equal to 5 over 9 times 60 minus 32, that's equal to 5 over 9 times, uh, that would be 28, and so we get 28 uh, divided by 9 times 5 equals 15.6 degrees, so 15.6 uh, degrees centigrade, and then of course, Again, we can't use centigrade degrees in there. We have to convert that to Kelvin degrees. So we have to add 273 to each. So 15.5 plus 273 equals 288.6. So that's equal to 
288.6 Kelvin. And of course, we have to do the same over here. We have 48.9 plus 273, and that would be 321.9 Kelvin, 321.9 Kelvin. All right, so we first convert a Fahrenheit to centigrade degrees, and then we convert a centigrade degrees to Kelvin degrees. Now we're ready to plug in the numbers in the equation. So pressure two, uh, that's uh, something we got right here. We have to, the total final pressure is 58.7 PSI. So 58.7 PSI. We multiply times the temperature initially, T1, which is 288.6 Kelvin. And then we divide that by the final temperature when uh, the tire is nicely heated up in the desert of 321.9 Kelvin. Notice that the Kelvin cancels out. We have the answer in PSIs. So we have uh, 58.7 times 288.6 divided by 321.9, and that gives us 52.6 PSI. 52.6 PSI. That's of course not the total. That's not the uh, gauge pressure. That's the total pressure. So this is equal to P total. So we have to subtract 14.7 from that. So minus 14.7. PSI for the atmospheric pressure, that will give us 37.9 PSI, and that would be P gauge initially. So, summarizing, we know that when we get in the desert, the tire temperature will be 120 degrees Fahrenheit. We don't want a pressure greater than 44 PSIs. So what would be the temperature, what would be the pressure that you want to put in the tires when the temperature is 60 degrees Fahrenheit, knowing they're going to get hotter. Uh, so we convert the temperatures to Kelvin. We use the equation that uh, P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. We solve for the initial temperature, P1. We know that the volumes will not change in the tire. We plug in the temperature when it's cold, the pressure when we're out in the desert, and the temperature when we're out in the desert. And the answer then, of course, when you subtract the 14.7 PSI for the gauge pressure, um, then we get a total of 37.9 pounds of pressure, or pounds of pressure per square inch, that you want to put in your tires. So there's the final answer.